Out of My Mind, Chapter 19. The week zipped by. I studied at school every day with Catherine, after school every day with Mrs. V, and every evening at home as well. I reviewed words from all of the levels of my board. I practiced spelling long words and matching facts and dates. I made up my own games. Mom quizzed me about flowers and medical terms. Dad asked me questions about economics and retail management and sports. I swallowed it all. Sometimes I sit in my room and just type in new sentences for Elvira to say. One letter at a time. It takes hours. But once an entry is in, all I have to do is push one button and the whole sentence will be spoken for me. I guess the question I get asked the most in a lot of strange variations is, what's wrong with you? People often want to know if I'm sick or if I'm in pain or if my condition can be fixed. So I prepared two answers. One that is polite but kind of wordy and one that's a little smart mouthed. To those who are genuinely concerned, I push a button that says, I have spastic bilateral quadrupelgia, also known as cerebral palsy. It limits my body, but not my mind. I think that last part is pretty cool. To people like Claire and Molly, I say, we all have disabilities. What's yours? I couldn't wait to use that one. When I showed Mrs. V, she laughed so hard she snorted. Now it's the Saturday before the tryouts, and Mrs. V and I are sitting outside on her front porch. I'm wearing a light jacket, but it's one of those rare warm February days that fools hyacinths into thinking spring is here. I want to warn the little buds and say, wait, it's going to snow next week. Stay put for another month. But every year, the early spring flowers shiver in the last snow of the season. We watch wisps of clouds hover over us. A canary-colored goldfinch is perched on the railing, looking at the empty bird feeder dangling above it. If he could talk, I bet he'd ask for thistle and more warm days like this. What would you do if you could fly? Mrs. V asks as she glances from the bird to me. Is that on the quiz? I ask, grinning as I type. I think we've studied just about everything else, Mrs. V chuckles. I'd be scared to let go. I type. Afraid you'd fall? She asks. No, afraid it would feel so good I'd just fly away. It took me a long time to type that. She is quiet for a very long time. Finally, she says, you are a bird melody, and you will fly on Monday when you take the test. I heard our front door slam shut next door and I wave to Mom and Penny as they wander over to the porch. Butterscotch, clearly happy to be unleashed, bounds next to them, sniffing the base of every tree. Penny walks with such determination, her face alternating between frowns and smiles as she concentrates on marching down the path between our two houses, then climbing the front steps with both hands and both feet. She's wearing her puffy winter jacket and the hat of the day, a blue straw thing that's scrunched and crooked from her sitting on it too many times. Poor Doodle, of course, drags behind her. Dee Dee, she cries, as she finally gets to the top step. I'm still boggled by how easily she does stuff. I touch the sleeve of Mrs. V's dress as I think about what she asked me. Freedom, I type, pointing at Penny. Freedom. Mrs. Valencia nods. She understands. What a glorious day, Mom says, breathing deeply. You think we're done with winter? More cold coming, I type. You're right, but it sure is a nice preview, Mom says as she unzips Penny's jacket. How's the study team progressing? Butterscotch rests at the bottom of the steps. I swear the dog looks like he's, looks like she's smiling. Good, I say through my metatalker. Violet, you're amazing, Mom says. The time and effort you've put into teaching her and getting ready for this test, and she breaks off, blinking hard. You must have taught her thousands of words. 
Nobody seems to be amazed that Penny is soaking up and learning thousands of words, Mrs. V replies with a shrug. Melody is no different. Mom nods in agreement. I know you're right, but... But... It's just so much harder for Melody. No, it's harder for us. We have to figure out what's in her head. I'm getting tired of them talking about me like I'm in another room. I turn the volume on my machine up loud. Let's have cookies. Cookies, Penny repeats. Mrs. V stands up. I hear you, Penny babe. Let me find us some sweets. As she heads into the house, she turns to Mom and says softly, Miss Melody here has always had a special place in my heart. Heartburn, I type. That gets them both laughing. Mrs. V returns a few minutes later with a plate of hot chocolate chip cookies and two servings of milk in red sippy cups decorated with Disney princesses. I hate to admit it, but a sippy cup makes it easier for me to drink. Cookies, Penny screams. She reaches for the plate, but Mom pulls her arm back. Mrs. V gives Mom two cookies on a paper towel. Mom blows on one, then gives it to Penny, who proceeds to stuff the whole thing in her mouth. Look at my little Penny pig, Mom says, laughing. Mrs. V breaks my cookie into segments, then places a piece in my mouth. Although I'm a caramel lover, these cookies must have been made in chocolate heaven. I swallow while Mrs. V gives me sips of cool milk. Cookies smashed down so great with milk. I don't even have to try to chew. I'd love to have enough control to feed myself, but that's one of my list of things I'd wish for, along with walking and taking myself to the bathroom and, oh yeah, flying. Interrupting my thoughts, Mrs. V asked, what continent produces the largest crop of cacao beans, which gives us chocolate? Africa, I type. She nods and gives me another sip of milk. And which state produces the most milk? California, I reply. I think you're ready, Melody, Mrs. V announces. Mom reaches over and strokes my cheek. You're going to rock on Monday. Then what, I type. Then you run for president, Mrs. V interjects. Yeah, right, I type out. Just then, Dad pulls into our driveway. Boy, does our big old car need a trip to the car wash. I guess Chuck got off early today. Mom says, looking pleased. Maybe we can get an early dinner. Dad gets out of the car, stretches and waves at us. Penny's face lights up. Daddy, she calls out. Standing up, she looks at us with a devilish grin. Don't you dare, Mrs. V warns in her I mean it voice. Penny ignores her. Go bye-bye in car. She loves to ride in the car. It doesn't matter where, the store, the post office, as long as she gets to ride in her little car seat in the back. Doesn't make much sense to me. She falls asleep as soon as we turn the first corner. She hurriedly bumps down the corn, a couple of the porch steps, then two more, waiting for a reaction from Mom. Penny Marie Brooks, you bring your little buns right back up here, my mother cries out. When Mom uses all three names... It's serious. Penny reaches the bottom of the stairs, looks back at us, smirks, and says, See, Daddy, gotta go to work. Then, as fast as her short little legs will carry her, she bolts for Dad. Mom, of course, has other ideas. So does Butterscotch, who jumps up, gives three short barks, almost like Mom using three names, and calmly walks in front of Penny to block her path. Good dog, Mom says. Come back here, little cookie face. By this time, she has hurried down the porch steps and retrieved my sister. This child, she says to my dad, who is ambling over to us, is an escape artist. I need four sets of eyes with her. She wipes the chocolate off Penny's face and nuzzles her. Good thing you've got butterscotch, Dad says as he brushes the top of the dog's head. How's my shiny copper penny today? Dad kisses Mom on the cheek and takes Penny from her. Penny manages to rub the rest of the chocolate from her hands onto the front of Dad's shirt. Just what I always wanted, Dad says as he glances down. Chocolate-covered clothes. The napkin Mrs. V passes him only smears it more. Dad just laughs. Go work, Daddy? Daddy just got home. Give me a break, kiddo. 
He hands Penny gently to Mrs. V, then sits with Mom on the porch swing. And how's my favorite melody? He asks me. Super, I type on my machine. Ready for your competition? Yep, I tap. Dad gets up and squats in front of me. You're going to ace that test and make that quiz team. I can tell he means it. I believe in me, and my family does, and Mrs. V. It's the rest of the world I'm not so sure of.